Hi everyone, David Mayle here, and today I'm going to show you something really cool. We're going to show you a distinct between count and distinct count. Now on the surface, it sounds like the same thing. It sounds very simple. It's not, but you use this a lot in analytics, data analysis, and data science. You're going to need to know these differences. So what I've got right here today is gas card information from a large uh, gas company, something like Exxon or Sunoco or one of those. I'm not going to tell you who it is, but that's fine. And on the left, we've got customer IDs, right? And you can tell by looking at this, customer zero uses it a lot. And if we go down this list, we got all the customer IDs down there. we got 183,000, uh, let's see here, 183,860. Take the last row and subtract that because you've got headers in the top row, right? So that's what this one does. It gives me that count, right? But I really want to have this. The difference is this is the total number of rows. So people might have used it one time. They may have used it 100 times. I don't know. I don't want to have all the 100 times sometimes. So this is your number of transactions. This is your number of customers, your actual distinct customers. How many? So if somebody asked you in a, in a case like this, how many distinct customers do I have? Not total transactions. There's a difference here. This one will get you this. And I'm going to show you how to do this. So it's a little hidden in, in Excel, but I'll show you how to do it. So first what we want to do is you want to click in here. Insert. I'm going to show you two different things. I'm going to show you two different pivot tables really quick. So we'll do this one. What we want to do is you want to click here. Use F through I. Make sure you got your existing worksheet over here. Click OK. And it'll put here. If you delete that existing worksheet out, it'll put it back here and overwrite your data here. And I'll tell, it'll warn you. And then I'll do that. And then you got to remove it and start over again. So let's go there. And then what I have up here, if you look at this, is I have nothing in the rows. All I really have is I'm doing count of cards and sum of amount, right? So all I did was this count of cards, right? Count of customer IDs. And I changed it by going here instead of sum. You can do it a couple different ways, but I'm just doing it right here. Count. You can do it this way. You can also right click on it. Um, so I've got that. See, I got that. And then what I'm doing is I'm bringing the amount down. So the amount, and I want some of the amount. So that's what I had here. So now obviously this one should be formatted as uh, currency, and this one should be formatted as a number. Okay. But now when I did that, look at it again. Okay. And your choice, so for count, let's pull it up again. This right arrow right here, not this one, this one right here. Value field settings. Now, if I go down this, look, do you see count distinct anywhere? I don't. You see VARP, VAR, count numbers, product, min, max, average, count, sum. There's nothing about getting distinct. It's also not under show value as. So how do I get that? So what we do is we come over here. I'm going to show you another one. We're going to go right here. We're going to do the same thing we just did. Let's make these a little bit smaller so that you can see it a little bit. Well, you know what? Just leave it the way it is because these are longer. So let's do this, and we're going to hit uh, Insert, Pivot Table, right? Now watch what I'm going to do. So I'm going to hit Select the Table or Range. Same thing right there, right? Now see, this is the same, this is the same, right? Just make sure this is not blank, otherwise I'll put it back over here. But see this little box right here? It says choose whether you want to analyze multiple tables. And it says add this data to the data model. Now by doing this, by adding it to the data model, watch what happens. Now I have this pivot table right here. But the difference is, watch. So when I go and put in uh, the field, so let's put the field list in. And let's put this down here. We want customer ID, right? And we want, I'm going to put them both in for right now. Amount, right but instead of sum remember the first one we want count so let's go to value field settings and I've got count right here right I could do that but watch what happens when I go down here because I did that add to the model I now have distinct count under VAR and VRP it's the last one here so if I hit distinct count that's going to go through and say I only want one time one row for each card or customer ID as I go through and the difference is See that? I get the 88, 6, 10, same as I got above. So I don't get this. So let's go take these. I don't know why that one's that format. Let's go back here. Number. We don't want two decimals for that. We want this because you can't have a half a person. Right? So let's take this. Format the cells again. Make that number. Can't have half a person or anything like that. So let's do that. Okay. And this one becomes what? We're going to do currency, right? That looks all good. And there we go. Look at that. The same thing. So what we did is I just walked you through how to get 
A, all the rows, right, which is what count of customer ID is. It's giving me all the rows. You can see how this matched up with the rows down below. But not only that, and this actually would end up being your transactions. Okay, that's actually what that would be. Hold your transactions. This would be your sales, right? So let's do this right. And this would be your unique customers or distinct, you know, just unique. People call it cards because guess what? A gas card is a card you have to carry it around. So that's what they call it. But you could call it unique customers. It doesn't matter. HHIDs, whatever you want to call it, you could do that. And that would be your sales again. Okay. So the difference is this avail or affords you the, uh, the ability to be able to say, okay, out of this many transactions and this many sales, which means you could get what? Their average basket, right? Amount out of that. And then this one, you could actually get, you know, the out of that number of people, the sales that was attributed to them if you wanted to. Okay, so when your boss says, I want to know, the transactions, the sales, the units, the customers, all that. Now you've got a bunch of the pieces. Now we don't have the units in here, but that's not a part of this. The main thing here was to show you how to get unique cards, how to take uh, this and be able to, through a pivot table in Excel, to get this distinct count right here, okay? Which is not available if I get out of this and go into this one, right? If I go into this and I go to this count, remember we showed you this before, it's not available in there. So we showed you how to get this, how to build it, how to build the quick pivot tables to get quick data, fast and easy on gas cards for customers. Uh, you can do it with anything you need to for this in Excel. It's very simple to do. Now you know how to do it. If you like this video, you like my channel, please go and watch the other videos on my channel. I have a lot of great videos in Excel, data analytics, data science, all kinds of great stuff. Please subscribe. Like, click the bell, and share. And thanks, and have a great day.